happiness at work. For some people, this is a foreign concept. They do not wake up every morning and look forward to spending the next eight to 10 hours at a place that they may find unfulfilling, boring, and sometimes just a bad place. As a society, we are always eager to look and find who is causing the problem. In this case, is it an employee problem, a work environment problem, or a problem with management? Have you ever heard the saying, people do not quit jobs, they quit managers? Before we dive into happiness and the motivation to achieve it, let's first take a look at what the cost of unhappiness really is. As a manager, you have to look for the signs and catch it early. The symptoms are stress, anxiety, and depression, and they usually follow each other in that order. Once an employee reaches the anxiety level, it not only affects their work, but it starts to affect those around them, and it can spread like a virus. Estimates have shown that depression, stress, and anxiety combined have led to upwards of $300 billion in loss of productivity, insurance costs, and employee turnover. Here is what one manager had to say about it. Hi, my name is Chris. I'm with um, Team Mechanical in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, I've also owned uh, numerous restaurants throughout the years uh, and managed different facilities. They always talk about one bad apple can spoil the bunch. Well, if you have negativity in your workplace and one uh, employee is talking negatively about other employees or about the boss or about the product, other people, their happiness level reduces and then they become discouraged and, and then it can just spread like that. And before you know it, the cancer is spread throughout the whole company and people are calling out sick and nobody's at their job. Your productivity level comes down, your sales volumes comes down and it can be really be the difference between being chapter 11 or, or being fortune 500. So now we have established what unhappiness can do to a workplace. So let's talk about happiness and how to achieve it. To get an expert opinion, we are about to hear from Vince Lutheran. Vince has a master's degree in business, spent over 30 years in mid and upper level management in the high tech industry, and became a professor of business management at UNC Wilmington once he retired. He is also the author of the book Management for Real Managers and Those Who Want to Be, a remarkable book that bridges the gap between academic and real-world management theories and practices. Yeah, well, let me put this in perspective. Um, I was already in the workplace uh, when I went off to uh, get my MBA. And it was there I came across a, a guy named Herzberg who had written an article for the Harvard Business Review titled, One More Time, How Do You Motivate Employees? Uh, this article had a significant impact on me because I practiced what he said for the rest of my career. <clears throat> and what Herzberg said, well, he started off by telling a story regarding motivation. And he said, I got this puppy, and when I wanted this puppy to sit, I'd kick it in the ass, and it would sit. I got tired of kicking it in the ass, uh, so I sent it off to puppy school. When it came back from puppy school, if I wanted the puppy to sit, I'd give it a biscuit, and the puppy would sit. Herzberg then pointed out that neither one of these had anything to do with motivation, because the puppy did not want to sit in either case. It either did not want to be physically abused, or it wanted a biscuit, but it did not want to sit. Herzberg then defined motivation from a management point of view 
as getting others to want to do what you want them to do. Not just do it, but to want to do it. And he further pointed out that to start out, you cannot motivate a sick puppy. If the puppy is sick, it's sick just like us humans. If we're sick, we're sick. So what are the things that create a healthy environment for motivation to occur? He called these things hygiene factors. And what they are, are things like your salary, the environment, your work environment, does it have air conditioning, uh, your benefit packages, all those kinds of things are not motivators. They're necessary for your employees to be motivated. They can't be motivated if they're in an unhealthy environment. So then what are the things that motivate employees? Number one is achievement. A good example of uh, motivating factors, and number one being achievement, an example of that is that if you're in a garage working on your car, you may have been doing it for weeks, and all of a sudden your car starts up. You feel good. That sucker is running and you made it happen. That's achievement. That's number one motivator. I am Rachel Baker and I'm a general manager of a restaurant. Okay, in the last 10 years, I have dealt with hundreds of people training, coming in, working, transferring, whatever it may have been. My most recent trainee is getting into management because he would like to go as far with this company as possible. He's had multiple other job opportunities, but he decided to stay with this one because this one allows him to advance as much as he can with absolutely no limit. Really, you could do absolutely anything. And that's something that has kept him with this company versus jobs that would pay him more or jobs that he would be able to work less hours because this is the one that he found that made him feel like he was doing something great and he was able to do it well, which made him want to do it for longer periods of time. Um, nine to five isn't nine to five anymore. There's uh, people taking off time for kid events and volunteering and, and personal time off. So you really have to know what's going on in somebody's lives and know how to motivate them that way to where they understand that work is going to willing to be their team and not so much a job. They want to be a part of a team. They want to, of course, get paid well, but uh, the team, the self-achievement, I accomplished this with my team is a big motivating factor nowadays. Uh, Take the same situation now. You're in the garage and your buddies are around drinking beer and all, and they've seen you working away in this car, maybe even laughing a little, and all of a sudden your car starts up and works, and they say, wow, Vince, that was great. Your car is running. You did it, man. That's recognition. That's the number two motivator. In the past, uh, the, just the simple fear of losing your job or not performing well and, and getting ridden up or whatnot was enough. But now employees are different and they are um, need more attention uh, and more uh, coddling, if you will. They, they require what we like to call the howdy law uh, and acknowledgement. They want to be said hi and bye to. Uh, every day they want to be acknowledged and feedback uh, of doing a good job on a regular basis uh, patted on the back which are all good things and, and they should be done um, but the expectation from the employee has changed to where it was years ago all right as far as recognition I had multiple people that obviously thrive on job well done pats on the back but there's a couple that really needed their name on the cake or they needed a sign posting that they had done the best job versus anyone else. We even had a time period where we would take votes at the end of the shift and see which of your coworkers best helped you that day 
and it was always the same person every single day and he left here having that in his resume of everyone's favorite employee so that might actually be the strongest one in food service because that's really the best way that we have to give someone a daily achievement is that recognition from coworkers and management that they've done a great job. Number three is the work itself. Employees cannot be happy. They cannot enjoy their work if they hate doing it. So you have to match employees' talents and desires with the work that they do. If you do that, then you have created an opportunity for motivation to occur within that employee. Um, my name is Brittany Fulford and I am an assistant manager at a restaurant. I don't know where the motivation comes from to do the things that I do here. I do a lot of things here that no one really does in other stores. I haven't been asked to do them, but they make me happier. I, I enjoy bettering my store because it just makes me happier. Work has become my happy place. So anything that I can really do to make my store better makes me happy. And a lot of the times the higher ups, when they see the things that I've done, they love it. They find it amazing. No one else does those things. And it just personally makes me feel better about myself and just makes me love my job even more. Motivation is an intrinsic value. You cannot eat it from outside. You cannot do it through bonuses and salary increases. Those are all hygiene factors necessary for motivation to occur, but not motivating factors themselves. The biggest problem we have today, in spite of what Herzberg said decades ago, too many managers keep using the word motivation as though all I have to do is give an employee more money or give them bonuses, things that are part of a healthy environment. They should already be in place. If you want to motivate, go look at achievement, recognition and the work itself and if you get those right you'll have about all the happiness in a workplace you're going to get.